Where to start? Okay, so I've been a course director at Deakin for close to five years, I think now. And when I started here as a teaching scholar, I kind of got thrown into this course directorship and they were like, okay, um, you're going to be a course director now and here's a degree you're going to look after. And I was like, okay, I'm expecting something that similar to I'd studied before. And I got into this and I was like, hang on a minute, this is totally different to anything I've ever studied, uh, studied before or been involved in and trying to figure out what it was all about was the biggest learning curve I think I've ever had here. Um, so I'm going to tell you, it's going to be a very easily digestible presentation today. This is going to tell you about it and kind of where we're at at the moment because it's been pretty much my baby across these past five years and getting it to the point of infancy to like now I'm adulthood pretty much. Um, today's been quite good actually before I, while I was running late today is because one of my students who's getting close to finishing this degree works at ANZ up the road and uh, we did her uh, poster presentation for her um, workplace project today so it was quite cool to go into ANZ today and um, see what they've done uh, in terms of that kind of project and what impact it's had so finally getting to the end point of getting graduates for this degree and really valuable kind of outcomes for their for their workplace not just kind of an assessment that we mark and just it ends up nowhere so it's quite good all right um, there's my LinkedIn if you want to kind of touch base about anything you hear about today Okay, I'm just going to run over the, the degree itself and then how it links into FutureLearn and then a bit about these things called micro-credentials, which some of you may know about, and some including points. So the whole, the whole degree in itself is really um, quite unique and it's quite valuable because it builds upon the student's past work experience and allows them to use that, that work experience and that overall experience across their entire career to help to accelerate a master's degree into what they say is one year. Um, that's if you're going straight uh, start to finish without any interruptions pretty much, but uh, we all know life gets in the way of that, but it can extend out to two and a half if you have extreme work commitments. Um, and this one's, this flavor is for IT specific, so IT professionals um, specifically who are kind of leaders in their field and had some quite extensive work experience. Um, yeah, offers a kind of alternative for those people who already know a lot and they don't want to go back into doing a degree where they're going to be studying those coursework units and like they're probably going to know most of it already. So why teach them the same stuff that they've already gained in the workplace when we can get get evidence for what they've done and accelerate their their time with us and they get something out of it, we get something out of it and it's a positive experience overall. So it's really around determining what their experience is and then as I talk about their matching cap uh, capability and opportunity. Uh, helps them reach their, their fullest potential in terms of a lot of them don't have master's degrees and they want to get one because it, it's helpful in their workplace to kind of get their next promotion, for instance, or kind of give that kind of real uh, leadership focus to their career. Helps a lot from what I've heard. Um, yeah, and the last point, digital delivery. So it's all on the study units are on FutureLearn. And we'll talk about some of the other integrations there. But um, I think it's been quite good in that sense to have it on FutureLearn because it's reaching, it can reach a global platform. Everything can be fully online. Um, brings a bit of a different flavor than some of our other degrees, at least in our school. Um, just a snapshot there of how it differs between a traditional degree, and a traditional master's degree and... So the one on the left is the, <coughs> the IT leadership one, which I'm talking about today, and then it's the traditional one there. So the main factors we can kind of see there, that jumps out a lot, the cost, um, it's a bit cheaper. Um, you can have it finished in much quicker time. There's only three units of study versus surely up to 16 in a traditional master's. Um, you also get a really good bonus. You get the degree itself, plus also you get uh, 10 micro credentials as well which you can link into your social media as well. So it's really, I always tell prospective students, it's a double whammy. You get a degree plus these micro-credentials as well. And yeah, it allows them to kind of verify uh, what, their, what their skills are and what, get to prove that they're good at, say, teamwork or communication or have a breadth or depth in IT. Uh, I've talked about this, what makes it different. But what I'll touch on here is pretty much 
we break it down into, yeah, a couple of preparatory units in terms of advancing their professional practice is one. And then the other one is really around R&D in terms of the IT discipline. And you might think these industry people probably um, are going to struggle with that quite a bit, these traditional R&D kind of aspects. But we've, we've developed a really good unit for this where it's industry focused and we talk about a lot of new tech like smart cars and things like that. So they get really engaged by it and everyone who's kind of gone through it so far is saying you know, positive feedback. Um, yeah, so the micro-credentials come in the middle. I'll, I'll show you some in, images about this, but um, 10 of those are basically you're kind of proving your professional skills by giving evidence. And then there's a capstone unit at the end, which is a workplace integrated project where they do it in their workplace, something that the workplace needs. They work with their manager, they work with an academic supervisor, and they bring that to fruition. We've got a MOOC as well, which has been quite good. Um, Again, as I talked about before, there's not been a massive amount of people switch over to the master's degree from this, but it's been other, there's been other benefits to it, such as like helping the community and kind of getting brand awareness out there, which has been difficult for this degree because it's so unique and trying to get people to understand what the credentials are and how the degree is structured, it's been a huge benefit. Um, we've had a lot of people code through there, about 35,000 as last checked. So it's been quite popular. So um, really around kind of even though it's the first two weeks of a particular preparatory unit in the degree, it kind of it's, it's almost its own little um, subject in itself. And we've got um, an entrepreneur from Silicon Valley come in as well. Yeah, um, so it's been quite beneficial. Um, I've only got a few minutes left, so I'll quickly run through some stuff here. There's a structure of the master's degree. So we've got the um, preparatory unit, preparatory unit, the ten credentials, then the capstone unit. We've introduced a community practice, which is a Slack workspace, which kind of integrates all the students because at this point here um, they kind of venture off and they're doing their own thing so we brought that in where the, the students can kind of jump into this slack workspace and discuss with the other students but also the other students in the other flavors of this degree across the university there's the grad cert only difference there you've got the two prep units but only three credentials and no capstone I'm trying to go very quick here um, there's some descriptions of the different units as I mentioned the first one um, professional practice it's kind of boosting their professional practice but also giving them insight into the degree and what credentials are and the Sophia framework and all that kind of good stuff um, yeah the R&D one I talked about already um, boosting their research and development capabilities in IT from more a workplace perspective which they can utilize in their job going forward because you can always use R&D for any job I think um, and then the capstone as I've talked about and there's kind of details about how they're structured. The only one that's really different is this one, it's just because it's like a capstone project, we don't want to have them involved in FutureLearn for a long time, teaching content, because it's more about them developing something. About six weeks, um, two courses, about 10 steps per week. Um, there's some of the micro-credentials across the top there. So eight of them are professional skill-based, and then two of them are IT-specific based, so IT breadth of knowledge and specialist level of knowledge. I'm getting close to the end. Um, yeah, most of the typical ones there, communication, teamwork, critical thinking, um, they're based upon the Deakin uh, GLOs as well. Second last slide. So just a bit of a snapshot, how you get a micro-credential. I didn't really explain too much about what they were because I didn't have time, but um, hopefully by this you'll get an understanding of what, what they are. So. I want to prove that I'm good at teamwork I want to, and I'm, I'm going to get a micro-credential in that. So what I do is I give some, I gather some workplace evidence about something I've done in terms of teamwork in my workplace, whatever it might be. I grab that and then I write a short story or testimony around it addressing a set of criteria that are given to me by Deacon and then um, I do an asynchronous interview and where, they, where the, the system asks me some questions that's recorded about teamwork generally and then specifically about my examples just to kind of test you out. Those three items are combined as a package and then sent off to an assessor who's one academic and one industry uh, person who's kind of good at um, teamwork, obviously, to assess that. That gets assessed and then it's either like, yeah, you're advanced or proficient, whatever it is, or you might just not be have it at all, which I would doubt if you've got evidence to showcase that. Uh, concluding points, um, professional skills are in high demand. I think the stat was by 2030, 75% of jobs are going to be soft skill focused. 
So this kind of links in quite well there because the students will be able to showcase that, yeah, I've got advanced skills in teamwork and someone's been able to measure that. No one's been able to measure it before Deacon really came on board. Um, so it's been quite, it's quite a unique experience for them. Um, and it kind of get, I know when I did a lot of that boosted my confidence a lot in the workplace as well to say, hey, I'm actually good at communication or teamwork, um, despite me just kind of maybe thinking I was. Um, yeah, can accelerate your master's qualification faster, but also your leadership qualification as well. Um, you get the, the 10 micro credentials on top of that to showcase across your LinkedIn or whatever social media you want to use. Um, yeah, delivered on FutureLearn, which has been a positive experience, high quality, um, social learning, um, year rich, all that kind of thing. The MOOC entry point was good. And then we've got the, the integration of the, the community practice Slack workspace. And I should probably edit the last thing. Um, the credentialing is done on a, a separate platform. It's run by Deacon as well. And it's got a brand new platform, very nice. So we've almost got three integrations here, which make it very unique. Yeah, that's it. Any questions? <laughs>